Hello, it has been genuinely so long since I sat down and filmed a video like this, so I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And then I've also decided to literally throw caution to the wind and record downstairs instead of upstairs. Just needed that like fresh vibe. So this isn't permanent, but I hope you enjoy my little lounge setup. <laughs> Okay, so today I wanted to show you what books I read for the Asian Readathon and then also at the end just show you a few I didn't manage to get to and which ones I'm going to be reading soon-ish. Obviously it's super important to read Asian books all year, um, not just in the month in AAPI Heritage Month. Also because I didn't do a wrap up this month I want to take a break. Um, I figured it would be a nice way to show you just some of the books that I read in the month of May. Not all of them, but some of them. <laughs> Before we get into the actual wrap up, I just wanted to kind of mention how almost pointless reading diversely is if you're not then going to support those communities in real life as well and kind of boost their voices when things are happening and when out when things aren't happening. This has been talked about a lot, especially by Asian booktubers this month, and it is so pointless to be reading diversely if that then doesn't extend towards actually supporting those communities in real life so yeah I just wanted to mention that before we actually get into the wrap up with that in mind I'm going to link below a few resources that people have put together where you can put your time and your money so with that in mind let's move on to the wrap up um because I usually make wrap up videos immediately after this is going to be different for me um, because I've forgotten everything. <laughs> so I've got four books to talk about that I read throughout the month of May um, for the Asian Readathon. Um, I've made extensive notes <laughs> so that I <laughs> hopefully have something worthwhile to say about each one of them. Before I tell you about the books actually that I've read, I'll tell you about the book I'm currently reading, which is Warcross by Marie Lu, which is a book I have been meaning to read for ages, years, and I'm so excited that I'm reading it. I'm listening to it on audio. Um, it is Minx, no, Minx, Minx. It is a YA um, dystopian, I guess. Dystopian, is that the right word? I don't know. Like YA video game. <laughs> think Slay, think Ready Player One vibes. To be honest, everyone already probably knows what it is because it's a very iconic book. But anyway, um, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I really, really like books that focus on like future developing technologies, video games, and yeah, I'm really enjoying it. So stay posted for my June wrap up, I guess, for my thorough thoughts on Warcross. But yeah, just thought I'd mention what I was currently reading. And now moving headfirst into the actual wrap up. So the first book I finished was The Henna Wars by Adiba J. Gadar. The, the prompts were so general that I didn't exactly read books for prompts. I have since come back and like kind of designated prompts to books, which to be honest, I do in all readathons. I like look it look through the prompts and I'm like cool and then I just read. <laughs> anyway, so this book fits the prompt. Well, it fits lots of prompts, but I've chosen read any book featuring an Asian protagonist. <laughs> so this book follows Nishat, who is a lesbian, and at the beginning of the book she just comes out to her parents and it doesn't go great. And it's kind of about her, it's why contemporary, did I say that? It's kind of about her like considering and coming to terms with her Muslim identity, with her queer identity, as well as like her relationships with her parents and most notably her sister. Um, her sister Preeti is great and their relationship genuinely was one of my favorite parts of this book. The sibling relationship, the sister relationship was so strong. Um, I loved it. I think it was a really strong part of the book. Um, I liked all of the book, to be honest. Um, so the main concept is that in school, Nishat is part of this class and they basically have to like start a business. And so she starts a henna business and then a competing henna business also start is started by Flavia. And it is about them and it's kind of like a acquaintances to enemies to lovers. <laughs> Um, I actually really thought that the enemies to lovers vibe was really good. Sometimes in enemies to lovers, it's like, they're not enemies, like, but actually they were enemies, but like, it was clear how frustrated 
they were with each other um, and in particular Nisha and actually that frustration was really well explored it's not just like they're enemies um I think it was really well explored the large focus of why they become enemies um is to do with Flavia kind of culturally appropriating the use of henna um and Nisha trying to explain to her why that is offensive to her and why it's upset her and her being very dismissive and so this is a very the art that arc is very much focused on without the book and I really enjoyed that I really enjoyed the focus as well on henna and about how henna is so important within cultures so yeah I really liked this book I thought it was really both nice but also dealt with a lot of hard topics too and the audiobook is really good so that is the first one and I was gonna save this my like books I want to read till the end but I'll just quickly show you um I recently just received for a review Hanny and the Issues Guide to Fake Dating which is Adiba J. Goodall's second book and I cannot wait fake dating bisexuals yes the second book I read was a net galley read and that is The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Ha I think I heard of this book through Elias maybe I'll link him down below um I have picked this one for read any book written by an Asian author in your favourite genre and the ones we're meant to find is a YA dystopian and I love dystopian books um I kind of like fell out of reading them for ages and now I'm like suddenly like super into wanting to read dystopian books again so the concept of this book is it kind of focuses on two sisters sibling relationships as well yes yes please yeah so it focuses on two sisters and one of the sisters is like deserted on a desert island and the other and is like trying to find her sister she can't remember anything all she knows is she has a sister and she was trying to find her and then the other sister we get her perspective too and she is not stranded on a desert island and it has kind of been comped as like we were lies meets black mirror which is i I'm here for it. So I, I went in with very high expectations and I did enjoy it. I don't think it met those expectations quite as much as I wanted them to. Um, but then also like they were so high. <laughs> I, so the good things first, it's a beautiful book. And really, I think this could be a five star for so many people. And it really is down to personal taste as to why it isn't a five star for me. I think I'd say it's like a 3.5 which is still like a solid rating it's really beautiful like the the writing and the atmosphere I can real I will say the way the that Joan Her writes about the sea especially the sea which is such a like not to be like it's an overdone thing but like it's the sea and people always like you know create metaphors out of the sea and it's always so like roll ie but no in this book it is done wonderfully it's so beautiful and it's so like I was almost experiencing the ocean for the first time that doesn't make any sense but like I hope you get my gist how well crafted this book is um and then the dystopian elements I thought were really interesting it's very much like climate fiction at the same time and it very much focuses on the fact that the earth has kind of been killed and destroyed by humans and people well not everyone and that's important um, they're living in eco cities. It's kind of really interesting commentary actually about who is like allowed into these eco cities and who isn't and it very much depends on like your history and your family history um, and like has your family worked in the oil business then you're less likely to be able to get into these eco cities which is very interesting commentary. Very, I enjoyed that a lot. So that was really interesting. I think the world building history I thought was really interesting in terms of like physically grounding you in the eco cities I didn't have 100% a clear picture of what it would be like in there but also I didn't mind that too much because there was descriptions and stuff um and it might have just been me <laughs> yeah I don't know I like all over the place with this book to be honest um there's a lot of big reveals in this book and some of them I was like genuinely like whoa holy shit um, but then some, I kind of, they kind of like passed me by and I was like, oh wait, was that a reveal? Or like, it wasn't 100% clear, which is why I think this still could be a lot of people's like five star read. But for me, I like things to be a bit more clear um, and a bit more, like I don't mind a wishy-washy vibe, but I think for me, I would have liked it to have been a little bit more like, I didn't know what was happening 100% of the time, which is fine. Um, but I thought by the end, I would have known 100% what had happened. And that is not the case. 
so I'm like okay to be confused throughout to try and puzzle things that's fun but as long as there's like a kind of clear ah okay ending and I did not get that in this book so anyway long rambly short I still would really recommend this book <laughs> because that definitely is a personal taste thing for me and the writing is amazing so I, I'm still definitely going to read more from Joan Har. so that's the second book right um and then the third book I read is a kind of collection of essays um and it is disability visibility which is edited together by alice wong um i picked this one for the challenge read any non-fiction book by an asian author and i think this works because it's edited by alice wong who is asian so this book very much puts together a wide intersectional group of writers and explores a wide spectrum of disabilities within those groups and i think it does so extremely well the book is like split into four parts which i didn't get 100 percent from the audiobook um i think that would be a lot more clear if you had like a physical copy but it is split i now know <laughs> into i'm just looking here being becoming doing and connecting it very much explores the intersectional nature of disabilities um i really want to get a physical copy actually because then i would be able to go back through and kind of thumb down which essays i really enjoyed and like take part um bits um i think that's the trouble with audiobooks i loved the audiobook but it's hard to you you kind of want to almost like scribble down the author title in like and it it's harder to kind of refer back to so i'm definitely going to get a physical copy but anyway that is not relevant it very much rejects like the inspirational porn that is so often put on disabled people um of as them being like so inspirational when in reality they are just standing there like stop calling me inspirational for living my life and that's it like i'm not doing anything right now apart from just like living um and so that notion was very much explored throughout as well and it's just a really excellent and well curated collection um i have a few notes here about um some specific topics that i found really interesting and things i had never considered before and kind of things i'd like to look into more and kind of this is why i want a physical copy go back and like refer to who the author was and like what books they had suggested and stuff like that yeah so some people dived into really specific topics and others were just more generally talking about like their experience being disabled so some of the specific topics i have written down here is being deaf in prison and not getting the resources needed to be able to communicate um which is a really interesting topic i had never thought about there was an essay all about the black lives matter movement in america and how black deaf individuals are not represented there was also an essay titled If You Can't Fast Give by Maysoon Zaid, and that talked all about being disabled and Muslim and how that affects her during Ramadan, which was really interesting. It was great to hear from authors and writers that I had already read from, um, like Harbin Gurma and Kia Brown had um, essays. Yeah, I love collections like this because it enables me to kind of discover so many different writers and authors and like look into more of their work. So yeah, I would really recommend Disability Visibility if you have not read it. Okay, and then the final book I actually have a physical copy of, Crazy, How We Met by Huma Qureshi. This was kindly gifted by Elliot and Thompson for review um, and I'm very grateful for that. So this I have decided can be either for the prompt, again, non-fiction by an Asian author or book written by an Asian author. <laughs> so this is a really, really short memoir actually, how long is it? just like over 200 pages and I read the first 20 pages one evening and then the next morning I woke up and I read the whole thing. It was so, so captivating. It was truly fantastic. The writing was so beautiful and as I was reading I was like aching to read more. That's how engaging of a storyteller Huma is. I think it was truly wonderful. We kind of follow her as she talks about her community in the UK, the Asian community in the UK and how her culture and being Muslim have affected her relationships and her notion of love, I suppose. Um, and so it kind of like at the beginning kind of deals with her conflict of like wanting to kind of follow her passions as a woman um, whilst also balancing and trying to figure out who she is. And so it very much in that way focuses on identity. Um, and then a kind of like scattered throughout it's a kind of like um back and forth um and we're kind of finding out how she met her white husband i love how beautifully honest it is and how much care and love she has and in that way she's very honest to the reader about 
not expecting like a cautionary tale and like there are no like yes she gets with a white man and her husband is white but there is no white savior complex vibes in this book it's really reflective in like hard times in her life when things have happened um that she dis didn't necessarily agree with at the time but in hindsight in hindsight sorry can see why people made those choices um and in that way it very much just imagines everyone in her life complexly and not as just individual beings but pe people that like communicate and are affected by everyone else um and it's a beautiful memoir so i honestly devoured it it was stunning i would really really recommend it so that is that <laughs> those are the books that i read last month for the asian readathon and i have so many more to read um and so i'm going to show you a few that i have um that i really want to read kind of like coming up um so there's just five here i'll just go through them quite quickly hello so the first one i already showed the first one i already showed you and that was honey and issues guide to thick dating by adiba j Gadar. super excited to get to this one i think i might read it this month because pride month um yeah super excited can't wait the next book I really want to get to is Mr. Ma and Son by Lao Shi. This is set in like 1920s England, which is very much not something I would ever read. I'm not a historical fiction-y type of person, but this one has really intrigued me. Um, and it very much takes you into like the heart and center of the Chinese community in the UK in the 1920s in London. I don't know too much about it. That's kind of the extent to what, what I know. And so, yeah, I'm really excited to get to this one. Um, the next book I have is, that I really want to get to is Life as a Unicorn by Amru al Kadi. This one was actually kindly gifted to me by Shelterbox Book Club, which I will link below. They are a really great organization. Um, and so this is a memoir, a journey from shame to pride and everything in between. This one seems to very much focus on sexuality, identity, and how those things can be so conflicting a lot of the time and working through that. Um, and because Amru is Iraqi and Muslim and also a queer drag queen. So yeah, really excited to get to this one. We have two more. So the first book I've actually only just picked up in um, the last month or so, and that is The Perfect World of Muwako Samida by Clarissa Ginawan. Um, this one got me from the back blurb. Muwako Samida is dead. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'll read this. It's not thrillery, it but it's like kind of thrillery, but more actually talking about suicide. That's kind of the extent to what I know about it. So I think this is going to be really, really potentially fast paced, but also a really interesting um, reflection of mental health. So we'll see. Really excited for that one. And then the final book I picked up, I picked this book up for a pound. Uh, and it is Journey Under the Midnight Sun by Kaigo Higashino. Um, one pound. So chunky. One pound. It is just over 500 pages. So that is quite a chunky, chunky book. I hadn't heard of this book before and I really want to read more thrillers. And I really want to read more widely within thrillers. Because I really do not like domestic white thrillers about like white middle class families from America or the UK. I just find them a bit boring. Um, not all the time. They they can be quite interesting sometimes. But I would like to just... There's so many other books out there, you know. Anyway, so this book is following a murder that happened 20 years ago. And lots of unsolved mysteries. Can this one detective solve this riddle? So it seems like quite a standard thriller. But I read the blurb and I was like, yes. So this is one I want to get to quite soon. Maybe when I have some time to dig, to to delve into a chunky chunky monkey don't know why i said that i've literally never said that in my life that is that um did you take part in the asian readathon did let me know and let me know what books you've read or if you've read any of these books i would love to know uh and just if you have any recommendations for me leave them below if you watch the end but you don't have anything to comment that's okay leave me a little unicorn for amru um yeah it's good to be back filming videos again um nice to have a little break but yeah, that was all. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in a new video. Bye.